So this is four ways to impress your RDCs in Navy boot camp. RDCs are recruit division commanders and are basically the drill sergeants of the Navy. And if you make their lives easier, it's gonna make everybody's life easier. Number one, help the people around you, especially if you see them struggling with something simple like folding a shirt or a blanket or whatever. It's a lot better for you to correct them than the RDCs to correct them because either you can tell them or they can scream at them. I mean, I guess either way, the message is gonna get across about what they got wrong and it's gonna get corrected, but it's a lot better for you to correct them than the RDCs because it can be handled at a lower level and they're not gonna blame and punish the entire division for the mistake. So if somebody messes up on something like Dave over here, all of a sudden, you know, it's not just them that's gonna have to pay for it. The entire division might have to all do push-ups because of that one person's mistake and because nobody corrected them. If you stop that right at the source, it doesn't go any further. So help the people around you, especially if it's like the questions they're getting wrong during inspections, when you're all standing in formation and they go person by person and asking them questions. If they're getting those questions wrong, help those people out. You can study with them and you can tell that you fully understand something if you're able to teach it to other people. If you can't teach it to someone else, that means you don't fully understand it yourself. So you can sharpen your own sword at the same time that you're helping other people. Number two, use the chain of command in boot camp. Now the chain of command in boot camp is gonna be extremely small. There's like you and all the other recruits, and then like AROC, ARPOC, the RDCs, the chiefs, and theoretically they tell you how it goes all the way up to the President of the United States. But after the RDCs and the chiefs, everything above that is pretty much just strict memorization to kind of get an understanding of how the actual Navy works after you graduate. But for boot camp, they want you to memorize it on a pretty much academic level. So again, the chain of command in boot camp is gonna be like you and AROC. AROC is the assistant recruit chief petty officer. That's the second in command of the division. It's a recruit leadership division, which means you can have it if you apply for it or if you ask for it and you show you're capable to receive it. The RDCs might appoint someone to that position, but AROC is also the cadence caller. When you're marching, they're the ones that sing songs and do the one, two, three, four to keep everybody in step. That's the second in command of the division on a recruit level. And then ARPOC is the first in command of the division. And it's okay for them to talk directly to the RDCs because they're the highest ranking recruit. So if ARPOC goes and talks to the RDCs, it's okay. But if you or me talk to the RDCs right away, you know, early on, they don't mind, they understand because you don't understand the chain of command. But later on in boot camp, it's like skipping over the whole chain of command to go talk to the RDCs. So imagine you were an RDC in boot camp and you're looking after 80 recruits. It would be extremely annoying if one by one, they're coming up and knocking on the door and asking the same question over and over and over again, or the same couple of questions over and over again, especially knowing that they could go ask those questions to RPOC directly. They can ask the questions once to that person and they could announce it to everybody. And instead one by one, they're all coming to bother you. So how a chain of command works, if you're not already aware, is like this person's gonna handle everything at a low level. And if this person can't handle it, it's going up to this person. And if this person can't handle it, it's going up to this person. If they can't, it goes up to this person. And this person has a higher and higher responsibility. Well, it doesn't work if you go from the person down here all the way up here. Because it's like, what happened to all of this? You just skipped over everybody? The person up here should be handling things that are much, much more important than what any of these people are already dealing with. And the person up here, say the RDCs by the end of boot camp, should not be bothered by anything that these people should have already handled. So if it's like a question of like, can we do laundry? What's the schedule for tomorrow? What's this and what's that? What are we gonna do with whatever? All of those questions should have been handled before it reached this level. It would be like going directly to the principal in your school every time you had a problem or talking directly to the CEO of a fast food chain. It's like what happened to all the managers and the department heads and everything. You can't go directly to the CEO. You have to work your way up and if it's really that important, it'll get up there. Again, at the beginning of boot camp, they have no expectation for you to understand this. They are okay with you talking directly to the RDCs because there's really no alternative that you're aware of yet. But by the end of boot camp, if you're talking directly to the RDCs, they'll just be like, why are you in here? That's an RPOC question. Go talk to RPOC, go talk to AROC. You know, who did you talk to before you came in here? And they'll slam the door, they'll yell at you to get out. But if you show this understanding early on, the understanding that you're supposed to talk to the recruit leadership before you talk to the RDCs and above, you're gonna really impress them 
And it's not like they're going to be like, wow, you know, we really appreciate everything you're doing for us. You're making our lives so much easier. But it's better to have silence than screaming and push-ups. It's really not going to be obvious that they appreciate any of these things that we're talking about here. But it's a lot better to have silence than screaming and push-ups and exercises and all that stuff. But regardless of what you actually see and hear, inside the fishbowl when they talk to each other, they are talking about each recruit. There's a little folder for each person that's going to label what they think is good and bad about the person and stuff like that. And, you know, they're judging each person. And you want to make sure that you come off as a team player and as a leader, especially if you're going around and correcting other people before the RDCs do, and you're using the chain of command, which is a great example for other people to follow. Number three, only talk when you're supposed to and when you have to. So especially when you're going to the cafeteria, which the Navy calls the galley. If you've already seen the cafeteria video, I already talked about this, but you line up and it would be best if everybody could just stay quiet, walk out and go to the galley and eat. But of course, some people have to keep talking and they have to catch up on what their friends were doing and saying and they're laughing and joking around and it holds everybody up. It's really annoying. It's just like the airport where if everybody just did the right thing, they announced group one is boarding, everybody could just go on and fly away. But of course, when they announce group one, group five shows up and tries to sneak in there and it holds everybody up. It gets delayed. The same thing happens in boot camp. You're trying to just walk out to the cafeteria and of course some people have to keep talking. All these people in boot camp know that you're going to get in trouble, you're going to get screamed at, you're going to get a beating for everybody if you are talking out of turn, if you're caught talking and laughing and smiling and all that stuff. And for some reason, there's still 15 people that want to be the only person talking. Well, it turns into a big mess of blabbering and all the voices are echoing off the walls. and. People ask me what boot camp is like, and I'm just like, imagine a room where 80 people are standing there screaming at each other to be quieter. It doesn't make any sense. So like, if you have people around you that are talking, try to find a silent way to quiet them down. So what, what happened to my division is that people were talking and other people were like, shh, oh my God, hey, shut up back there. And it's like, that's just making more noise. How do you quiet people down by making more noise? So what you can do is like, just kind of, you know, quiet them down with hand motions or something, and it's more effective. So don't ever talk unless you have to or you need to, and the quieter you are, the smoother things are gonna go. You're gonna get to the cafeteria faster, you're gonna do whatever you're doing faster, and if people are talking, if people are talking out of turn, they're laughing and joking around in the hallways and stuff, it's gonna make everybody's life more miserable because they're probably gonna take it out on everybody, especially if they can't figure out who it was if they don't know what one person did it, everybody's responsible. Number four is be loud and motivated. So I don't know if you know this, but being an RDC is one of the hardest jobs in the Navy. They work very long hours, have a very tough job, and they have to just live and breathe the job every single day. What they're trying to do is raise the next generation of sailors that are gonna replace them and their friends after they're gone. And the last thing they wanna see with all their hard work and long hours and effort they're putting into all this is a couple of kids walking around there going like, yeah, I don't care about this, this is stupid. It's like, now whether you're aware of it or not, they're looking at every single person in that division and imagining if that's the kind of person they want to have next to them, working with them in the real world, especially during like a dangerous or stressful situation. Are you someone that they would want to have next to them during a very dangerous situation like a fire on the ship or an active threat or something? It's like if you're not here and you're not ready, and you're not gonna pull your own weight, and you expect other people to pull your weight for you on something simple like making a bed and folding a blanket and doing a two hour or a four hour watch when we're doing 16 hour days out here, it's like, give me a break. So once you finally completed all of your training, meaning boot camp, A school, C school, any other schools you need to complete for your rating, you come out to the real world again, you don't have to be a stock off the shelf hoo Navy sailor anymore. You just have to be someone that pulls their own weight, shows they care, put in the same effort as everybody else, have a team player mentality. And a basic version of that team player mentality is all they're really looking for in boot camp. 